was like, God, is this what you want for me? And I started applying for other jobs, but I couldn't get other jobs. I started applying for jobs outside of the NHS because I was just like, I've had enough. And that's when God started orchestrating everything, basically. He started orchestrating everything. He started like saying to me like he started putting in my mind that i want to do jobs where i travel the world why don't you do something that you really want to do do something you really love do something you're passionate you're 35 you're single you have no kids go for it francine believe in yourself right why are you stuck in a tiny cramped up apartment with mold with um you're overweight and you are tired exhausted when you go to work these patients don't have respect for you why are you doing it and when i went to church it's like god would give me confirmations right so he would say things like um i remember one time my pastor said um at the end of the year god is gonna write you a check and the check you're gonna have um capacity and that check is gonna allow you to um to be able to fulfill your dreams to um to um, execute the vision that God has for you, the plan. Why some of you leave that job, you're stuck in a job where people are disrespecting you, where you know they curse you and yell at you. Why would you want to stay at somewhere where they're disrespectful? And that was God speaking to me because before that, um, people had said, Oh, you know, one or two people found out my hand thing, and I said, Especially one person that I had worked with, he, um. In my first year, um, when I did the underwood that first year, one of the managers, I saw him when I was working at another unit when I was six. I was working at this unit that was only computer. So you only did computer-based things to help with my hand. And he was there for another illness, right? Um, and basically, he said to me, look, I used to work for the trade union of nurses. Why don't you sue them? Why don't you do it? So that is what I did. So hello, this is literally maybe part two or whatever like. Okay. But basically, um, people might be like, how did this? So this happened over a span of three years, right? The incident happened in 2021 where the window came crashing on and i didn't decide to sue them until 2022 around february it happened in april so almost coming up to a year i called and contacted the trade union lawyers and told them and they said okay let's this go this is ahead. a website for the personal injury claim that you can go on if you want this is the eligibility you really just need to be a membership and they will cover you and they talk about all of the different things, workplace illnesses. I was injured in England. What do you do? Um, basically, so just go to the RCN, and this is a this is who I used. I used the RCN, and I didn't have to pay for anything. So if anyone's interested, if you got injured at work, please, please take this up, and don't sit down and let. Oh yeah, it's gonna get better. Sometimes it just doesn't and i didn't get everything finalized until 2023 because i left my nursing job at the end of september and this was an agglomeration of different things god was saying because you know what i kept saying while i was doing the job was like especially my first year of dialysis nursing oh, i'm gonna leave this job by 2025 like or i'm only gonna stay here for three years five years max like and literally that's what happened because i was with them for five years one year on the ward and five years in dialysis i said i'm not going to stay longer that i'm not going to stay i'm going to find something i'm go probably going to go back into media but obviously i was still struggling to find a media job at the time and i hadn't and i think i only started my youtube maybe last year so like and i actually started my youtube channel probably because of covid and the hand injury so god was pushing me into my destiny and helping to align me so this hand injury the dermatitis the anxiety by the end of it i literally had anxiety guys <laughs> the last month of me working there because they had stressed me out like i went back there and i into the dialysis unit because what happened was during the six months i was on and off sick then I had to return back to work because the NHS don't pay you after six months. You only get six months full pay. 
after that it will be half pay so i return back to work on um how would i say what's the word now you don't return back to your full capacity but you return back like they will give you other jobs right to help where you work but it will help lessen the the suffering that you have on, a, on your hand it's a word i can't remember the word of it it's um whatever they just put you in other environments but you can't if you can't do the job that you're meant to do they will find other work for you basically so i return back onto to my job in that capacity but it was a dialysis and then after two years of um maybe a year and a half of doing that i had to actually return back to dialysis right so i went back there and because my hands started getting better eventually i went to physio they um, the doctors told me to go physio um i was managing my pain a bit better by doing like cbd oil i was massaging it i was taking painkillers you know i was exercising losing weight um like started giving it up to god started praising him worshiping leaving my anxiety at the door with god and I started getting better so I went back to dialysis but when I went back there these people literally nearly killed me when we said me nearly dead these patients were working me this they were working me there I kept on doing overtime when I reached back there um, then they put me in a unit which was more supposed to be independent dialysis patients where the patients put themselves more in the machine but a lot of these patients were in the end you would be doing most of the work i'm putting them on and because they were supposed to be independent more self-care the fact was they were meant to line the machine um, help clean the, the machine after you know put themselves on and you just be there to monitor to make sure if they don't get sick or to help for those who might struggle with certain things but that didn't happen in the end oftentimes you were doing all the work you were cleaning the machines because people would come like you set up the machine because people would come late you clean the machines after because they don't clean it properly so you have to make sure they clean it so the next patient don't come and end up with a machine that has all sorts of grime and gunk can cause infection and then they were giving you less staff than the other units because they're self-care so you're doing double the work and then they because I was one of the more senior staff and I did the course and I had more experience they started giving me leadership things where like I would be the more senior nurse on, on staff and then the rest were like band four which is they're not nurses but they have the ability to do some role of the nurses but i'm the one at the end making decisions so literally i'd get angry pa um, patients difficult patients who wouldn't want to listen and do their own thing um then i having to do like double the work and my hand you know sometimes still would ache especially on cold days so by the end of it tell me why you girl had anxiety attacks and i didn't even know it i thought i had gotten rid of it so there were times that I'd feel like fate, like I was going to fall over and drop, right? And this thing had been ha happening before, but it was stopped because I stopped taking the um, anti-inflammatory tablets. And I thought that was causing it because some of the side effects from taking diclofenic was that was feeling dizzy, blurry vision. So I remember when I was in my last month of working there and I went back downstairs to my actual dialysis unit. I started feeling sweaty. My blood pressure would drop. I would become um what's the word again? Um the it's when you have look hypertensive, I would become hypertensive. Sometimes more than one day, dizzy spells you get up, I would feel like I'm gonna fall over, everything is dizzy and blurry, right? I thought please let it not be diabetes or whatever. And then I remember one time my heart rate was like, I went to work and my heart rate was like, was it like 148 or something crazy like that? And my blood pressure was low. And then it was and like, these people were stressing me out. So I walked out. I told my manager, we're going to argue it. Anyway, I walked out. Went to the doctor, took sick leave off for maybe like a week or two. Um, the doctor did ECG and he said it's nothing to do with your heart and he said this sounds like anxiety every symptom you've mentioned it is anxiety so that was God just showing me 
he doesn't want me there anymore. From the fact that I had dermatitis from there, hand injury, <laughs> um, with the window falling on, then dermatite, then um, anxiety attacks. I was so anxiety ridden. I remember when I was on my sick leave and stress was taking me over and I had to call the hotline. I called the hospital hotline that deal with nurses who are stressed out or any medical like doctors or whatever. And I literally talked to a therapist. And also don't forget I was fighting the court case so the court case like having to give um, letters in having to um, every receipts of everything everything that had happened what health what care that I gave pictures store tell them my side of the story everything back and forth with the lawyers everything I was just stressed out by the end of it so God literally pushed me out of the NHS and said girl leave the pastor told me different things i've prayed and fast and god said i don't want you there like friends like close christian friends were telling me i don't think god wants you there anymore and god was literally showing me the signs so that's why i left i left the nhs with due to lack of pain good pain because i couldn't i didn't even have a mortgage i barely could afford a decent one bedroom i was living in a tiny cramped apartment i was unhappy um lack of enough just so many different things like aggressive patients and also some of the staff weren't they were nurses but they were something else so if you're not dealing with aggressive patients you're dealing with politics in the workplace and some really not so kind staff members but anyway they were least of the problem i mean in the first year of nursing they got all, they were like a thorn in my side because they like hazed me they were some hazers but by the end of nursing like they were least of my problem i was just like whatever it's just the patients that no matter how much I tried, how I tried to be kind, sometimes I didn't argue. It was just some really, someone's who were really challenging, like. And I had to remember some of them had mental health issues as well. And they weren't, some of them weren't medicated, but actually had mental health issues. So you're dealing with unmedicated people who had mental health issues coming to literally war with you every day. I felt like every day I went to war, work, I was at war. <laughs> like literally, it was also a spiritual battle. I had to pray and fast many times. I had to say prayers before I went to work. And the ch and child, I was just exhausted. And so I'm glad I left the NHS. I would never go back and work there. And I would never disencourage people from. Because there are, the NHS needs nurses, it needs doctors. I know loads of people are leaving in droves. And sometimes it's not worth it because the pay is crap. And you don't get appreciated as you should. And you get disrespected. But I know some friends and who still work for the NHS and they're doing good. They've moved up the ranks. They're band 8, they're band 7, they're band 6 now. Some of them um, have bought houses because of them, of that. Some of them have found their loved ones there. They've married, you know. So it works for some people, but for God, God said, that's not what I have for you. And I just had to be obedient. Right now, I don't have a job. I do. I'm dependent on family members for like, I, I've moved by the way, I moved to Jamaica, but I'm dependent, but I'm tr I'm going to trust in God and believe he has the best for me. I really want to get back into media and I hope someone out there will see this video or like, hopefully I will, someone be kind enough for when I go to my interviews, we'll say, okay, she might not have all the experience, but she's trying her best, let's offer a job because media is hard to get into but people just pray for your sis that um, and i'm praying that things will work out for the good for those who believe in the lord for those who put him first all other things shall be added so i'm trying to see god trying to put him first and trust the process and yeah at least i get to do videos like this this is free 
it doesn't take a lot to put on your camera and speak so this is what i went through and would i go back to nhs you couldn't pay me your could on pay me to go back there you could even drag me to go back to the nhs no way jose but that's my story um i would tell people to really research and think about it before you go to do nursing but it's not meant for everyone and kudos to those who have stuck with it who are going to retire as nurses hands up to you because i fancy camille kitson could not but you can anyway peace and love please guys follow me share subscribe because your girl need the for the one time your girl need followers right she needs followers please follow me please share please subscribe for more content and there's more to come guys this is my blog you just go into my youtube page click it and it will take you straight to my blog melanated morning millennial please have a look i've updated it with some articles and it's just basically a blog that looks at me moaning about life about situations about culture about shopping about bills about anything that life throws at you i have i i have written it down and discussed um so if you're interested and you want to have a read then you can just click on it and as i said it's on my youtube page at the top there's a link you click on it and it takes you automatically there isn't it beautiful look at the color green i like teal yep there you go that's me going through that that's when i talked about the high street and this one i hate that hollywood is repeating movies and rebooting everything we need something original and fresh in hollywood but yeah i discussed about that in that article